That's when I thought it was all over with all my different styles of APMs and flight controllers I got here for the variants of the Pixhawks and the APM 2.6. I was going through my junk drawer and I actually found a brand new Pix Racer I had ordered about a year ago and I actually never made a video for it. So what this one's going to be about is the Pix Racer and it's another variant of the Pixhawks. So here's the original Pixhawks and then I did a video with this guy here and um, these three over here are all APM 2.6 variants and these three here are basically the same as the CX-20 one. But anyways, so like I was saying before, I went through, uh, I was going through my stuff to see what other projects I had, and I have tons of stuff still that I just never opened. And I found this guy, or this package I actually ordered and forgot all about it. The most I ever did with it was just plug it into my computer to see if it worked, and that was it. So apparently I had ordered a bunch of these guys and that would go on the bottom of the picks or on the, uh, yeah, the picks racer like that. So just to show the differences between this guy here and this, here's the size. They're about the same. The only thing is, is this one weighs twice as much. See if I can get this to work. So here's this first one I had done a while back. That one's 13 grams. And this guy is 29 grams. So a little bit more than half. And it's probably because this guy here has a metal case. Personally, um, I'd probably still go with this guy because it's lighter. And if it does the same thing, what's the point? Except this guy here, you have two options for the uh, firmware. You can either use Q ground control or um, mission planner and I'm just uh, used to mission planner so I'm going to show you guys how to change this into uh, audio pilot or whatever or order a copter and uh, kind of mumbling that because I'm not saying it properly but that's okay all right so what this guy came with is this obviously I ordered um, I think this came with it too this is to change it PPM to PWM if you're going to use this in your CX-20 you're going to need this and it should come with it if not, I'll show a link for it anyways. Um, these guys, I don't really think this is that much of an absorber. I mean, it's, I don't know, it seems cheap and it wouldn't really work. But uh, yeah, I think it was only a couple of bucks anyways. And it might be too high up in the CX-20, but we'll get to that. And it also came with um, a Wi-Fi adapter. And you can plug this Wi-Fi guy right into here, except as we all know, the CX-20 has issues with uh, Wi-Fi interference. So I probably won't be using this. I might at the end of the video show how to use this and how to use the software to go with it. With it. But for now, I'm just going to actually skip this guy until the end of the video. Okay, and then it came with a whole bunch of wires. The switch which I'm doing I'm gonna disable it because that I find that annoying and a speaker and then all the other extra wires which you're gonna have to cut up and stuff like that okay before we install this into the CX-20 I suggest uh, finding this cable here with the button and the speaker and plugging it into the picks I always suggest testing these guys first so on the back here it'll say buzzer and safety and these new style cables are pretty cool. It comes with a little clip style. This way you don't have to yank on the wires anymore. I've broken all my GPS wires and compass wires by pulling on them too hard. I always plug that into the wrong one. Okay, it goes there, the buzzer. Right? So you have an option between the two programs with this. You can use your, either use Mission Planner or Q Ground Control. A Q, Q ground control looks really powerful, but I'm not going to be using it. I'm only going to use it to update the firmware so I can use it with Mission Planner instead. It's up to you which one you want to use. So I'm going to open up Q ground control. All right, so I'm going to plug in the USB cable into the flight controller. 
and um, see if it works first. I'm using a really long cable here, so it might be a little buggy. Right, and I'm gonna click on this plane type icon, and here you can see if the compass and the flight controller is actually moving around with the gyro. Right, so it all looks good. So like I said, you can use this program because it looks really cool. Lots of options in it, but uh, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna jump back to Mission Planner because I'm used to it right now. So go to the firmware one, click on this icon here, and then click on the firmware. It's gonna tell you to unplug it, and then plug it back in. So I wanted to do this in a virtual machine, but I kept getting a black screen, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. So here's your two stacks. So I'm gonna go with this stack instead of the PX4 stack. And I'm gonna go with uh, whichever one's at the top, obviously, and it's for a copter. Okay, and I'm gonna push OK, I believe. It's important here, don't disconnect it or nothing. I believe the bootloader is really good on this, so you, it'd probably be really hard to break this one, but. I don't want to be making an unbrick video yet for this guy. And after this is done, uh, Mission Planner, if there's a newer version, you can just use Mission Planner, Planner to update it to the newest version. Okay, I'm just gonna see if the lights come back to life on it. All right, and you can technically still use this program as well, I think. If you want to, to use uh, the change of settings and stuff. But as I said before, I'm just going to move back to Mission Planner. So now I'm just going to unplug it. And I'm going to jump to Mission Planner. Put this guy down. All right, so um, got Mission Planner loaded up. Now I'm gonna plug this guy in. And it's COM6, I guess. And I'm gonna push connect. All right, so it's already connected. Got the parameters. So that looks really good. I'm gonna go to um, initial setup. So actually config and tuning, standard params, and I always change the, the arming check right off because if I'm doing my tests in a house, I don't wanna have issues with the GPS or anything like that. So I'm just gonna uncheck this guy here. And then this way, there's going to be no fail safes at all for arming it. It'll just arm. And then uh, write my parameters. And then there's also the button. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find that right away because it's been a long time. Don't ever use your scroll wheel in this. Always use this guy here. Uh, it's been a long time, so I'm not sure what's named. Okay, it's this uh, BRD safety enabled. This controls the switch. So I just have I just disable this. This way, when you arm your quadcopter outside or whatever, you don't have to hold this button down first to arm it. It it just goes back to how it used to be. So that button becomes useless. Behind you just for the light, I guess. So I'm gonna change this to zero. And I'm gonna write my parameter. Um, I think that's about it for now, because at the end I'll show you how to change your uh, radio calibration, not your radio calibration, your flight modes and stuff. We'll change all that after. 
Um, we can see if there's a newer firmware out, because right now I'm running 3.4.6. So we'll just see if it's outdated. So I have to disconnect. So there is a newer version, it's 3.5.5. So we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna click on this guy. Yeah, I'm sure. I almost pushed OK there. Still holding my mouse button. So once that's done, you can push OK. And just give it a minute to make sure it's not doing anything else weird. That blue light might actually mean it's still programming. Okay, we're going to try connecting to it now. Okay, so we're at 3.55, go back to flight data, just to confirm that things move around and the compass. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the CX-20 install and this should be good enough for now. Okay, again, before we jump into the quad, I'm gonna show you out of the quad with an extra receiver I have here, how to do the connections to this guy here. So for now, I'm just gonna unplug the motor and speaker, or not the motor and speaker, the speaker and uh, safety button. So it's just a little bit cleaner. And then here's this guy here. So what this will do is convert uh, PPM to PWM so you can use your CX-20 transmitter. So this little guy is actually cool. A lot of wires here. We don't really need all of them, but that's fine. What I did in my other video is I just removed the ones I don't need. I just use a pin and poke out the other ones. Okay. So this guy plugs in on this end. See if I can get it in there. So hard to see. that and this guy plugs into the APM on it should be RC in right there I don't know if there's a glare here okay okay so that's pretty simple so now it's just simply going by the color codes and the channels so this guy gets plugged into here like that so let's get the positive and negative out of the way first. And that's at the end. And on the receiver, the middle row is your positive. And we're gonna be working with A. So it'll go like that at the top. And then your ground. So you only need the one ground. And I already messed up there. I'm gonna hold it this way instead. The ground is the bottom row. So the middle row is your positive, bottom is ground, and your top is your servo slash switch. So it'd be like that. So A is your channel one, and I'd be the very first wire here. So to separate it, because there is two yellow, so you might get them mixed up. So just do one at a time. You have no choice anyways. So channel one is A. The next one is blue, and that's channel two. And that plugs into E. The next one is white, I believe, and that is channel three. And that would plug, plug into T at the top. They're all at the top now. The next one is orange 
and that is channel four. And that plugs into R, again at the top. Now the last one is um, channel five, and that's green, and that's for your, your switches. And that plugs into one. And that's at the top again, like that. So the rest of these wires here, these three here, I would suggest if you're not going to need them, just remove them out of the um, this thing here so it's a little bit cleaner. I always get in uh, crap from comments or whatever because my it's pretty messy while I'm doing it, but I have no choice. But anyways, just remove these three wires because you don't need them for the CX-20. Okay. So now I'll just install this. I think that's the only thing I really have had to do out of the quad, just in case it wasn't that clear. So now I'm just going to show me installing it on the quad, but it's going to be a lot faster and I won't really explain, or I'll explain quickly. Welcome to the mess. Now remove your old APM and remove all the wires. For all your ESC wires, just move them off to the side on each corner, and then your two gimbal wires. That would be these guys here. Now you also have to extend the USB cable because the USB cable won't reach to the other side. So what I suggest doing is just um, cutting the wire, find four pieces of wire, preferably the same color code, and then just attach it, heat shrink it, solder it or whatever, and then uh, just extend the wire. I don't really have to explain that because you're doing wire for wire just so this can reach to the other side. So I'm just gonna put this over to the side. Okay, like I said earlier, I bought some of these guys here and they're little shock absorbers and that's for this guy here. So the APM would be hooked up like this, but I'm not sure if the lid's actually gonna fit on. I don't think it would, especially with the module on it. So I'm most likely just gonna use some uh, carpet stuff or whatever and mount the APM down on there. So again, in all my videos, I leave everything loose until the very end. So just follow along with me pin for pin and everything should go smooth. Now it has an arrow here and a light up top here and this is the direction it has to go. I have a video showing how to find true center on your quadcopter. It's up to you if you actually wanna find it, but I would just estimate it and I'd probably put it here. I haven't, I haven't opened up this guy yet to see where the gyro actually is yet. So I would just suggest putting it about center. It's okay if it's off anyways. All right, so I'm back with this little guy here. And then here's my receiver here. What I do here is I notched out a little hole on this side and a hole on this side. This way when I run the wire, it just runs like this when I shut the lid. I'm always opening and closing this guy. Okay. So back with this guy again. So this guy gets plugged into RC in. Get rid of the positive and negative first. Ground on the bottom, positive in the middle. So white, blue, yellow. So white is A, blue is E, and white, or did I already mess that up? Nope, and white is T. And then orange and green. So orange is R. And green is for your switches, that's one. All right, so it's already pretty damn messy. So let's see if we can somewhat clean this up. So what I'll do is just pause it and I'm just gonna mount this guy right there and twist these wires together somehow. So it's a rat nest over there in a the corner like that. So give me a second.
All right, so I just got this taped up for now. All right, so the last two wires here for this guy here is, well, not the last two, there's three actually, is the gimbal wires, one and two. It's okay if you get these reversed, just move them around after. So the one with the white by itself goes into number two with white at the top. And then your uh, five volts and your other gimbal wire would go into three, like that. All right, so I'm just gonna leave, should I just leave that unplugged for now? Let's see, because it's going to get so messy. All right? And then, of course, the USB wire. And the USB wire comes all around and plugs into the side of the APM here. This way you can plug in the quad underneath. But I'm going to save that and the two gimbal wires for last, just because it's kind of messy. And I'll just show where they go now. Now, the power, this guy here, what we're going to use is the original 5 volt regulator off your power board. All right, so going through all your wires, you're going to have to find the power module wire. And that guy looks like this. It'll have two blacks, two grays, and two reds. Now the problem with this cable is it's wired backwards. Technically what you can do is, if you have a uh, power module, you just simply unplug this connector here. And then you can plug this guy into here. And then this would just plug right into the PIX racer. Except if you do that, you're going to fry your PIX hawks instantly. Because they actually sent this cable with the wires backwards. I'm not sure why they did that. I guess they have uh, their own power modules or something. I'm not sure why they did that. So what you'll have to do is take these one pin at a time and swap them. Just reverse reverse it all but sticking with the theme I'll save this guy for the end of the video I guess we're not going to be using a power module we're going to be using the cable right off the CX20 itself so what you're gonna have to do is just skin back two wires all right so what I'll do is what I suggest doing is just plugging this guy in or whatever this guy goes into the positive sorry to babble on a little bit here so the power guys on the bottom here goes there and we're only going to be using two of the wires so a red and a black one so we can just cut those two or you can skin them back it's up to you which way you want to do it I'm just going to cut them and then skin them back and I'm just going to do a direct solder if I can get this guy in there Okay, so if you can't solder, what you can do is with, move this guy up a bit, you can just uh, cut these wires as well, the black and the red wire, you can just cut it, skin it back, and do a twist. But what I'll do is I'm just going to solder them directly onto the pad, so I'm just going to remove Sometimes you have to uh, add some cheap solder. They actually use good quality solder here. So the red one goes into the middle. And then the black one goes on the ground. OK. 
Okay. So what I would suggest doing with all these wires here is if you're going to keep it like this, just remove all these extra wires for the time being because it's going to get messy. But at the end of the video, I'm going to show how to use it with the um, power module. So I'm going to have to unsolder it, reconnect it all, and figure out how to fix it after. All right, motors. As always, this is motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. And this guy here, it goes in the direction here, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the other thing. This guy only supports six, where this micro picks actually has uh, eight, plus two more for um, aux channels, I believe. No, I'm wrong. This one only supports eight. All right. Okay, the motors. You can remove the red wire out of all of them if you want, because you don't need the red wire. However, this doesn't, uh, it's not live in the middle anyways, or it's not supposed to be. But really, I would just remove the red wire out of all your CX20s anyways, because they're not needed. So right at the top. So motor one goes on this left side at the top. Number two, right at the top, goes in the second part. Number three, see if I can get routed over here nicely here, goes into the third one. And then number four, goes there. All right, the next step is with the GPS. Order yourself a Neo or something. Maybe at the end of this video, I'll show you how to connect the original um, GPS, but uh, it's easier if you just order one of these guys for this unit because it comes with this cable and it's just plug and play. But it's just, it's just a couple of wires anyway, so it's really up to you which way you wanna do it. So what I do in all my videos is usually the pinouts. I can just, quickly draw a picture and post it up but I'm just gonna draw it with you guys because um, usually these GPS's come with different wiring schemes or different colors and uh, the pinouts will be the same it's just the colors will be different and if you notice here all my wires have been uh, pretty mangled a lot and that's the difference between uh, I like the this style here where you can actually hold on to the end and push down this clip to remove it instead of yanking on the wires you're supposed to be able to put your nails in there and pull these out, but it, it usually never works that way, especially if you're like me. I've taken this out of my APMs probably over two, three hundred times. So every GPS I own basically has broken wires now. All right, so the way I always draw my stuff now is with the pins up so you can see the metal instead of that way. So we'll do the, G, the GPS here. This is, uh, it'll be good for the Pixhox or the APM 2.6, so you can order either or. So we'll go with, uh, oops, we'll go with GPS Neo. See if I can keep my arm out of the way. So we'll do this this plug here first, the five pin, and on a Pixhox it would be six. Hopefully I left enough room here. So the way it goes here is, uh, on mine at least, it was black, space, brown, yellow, red. So black is ground. On a Pixhox, you might have two empty spots there. Brown is RX, yellow is TX, and red is five volts. On this two pin connector,
All right, screw that up again, didn't I? That's some bad drawing, but anyways, that's some bad English too. Okay. So this guy is SDA, and that is SCL. And this is the most common one that would come with different color codes. On mine, at least, it came with uh, SDA is blue. And then SCL is white. Usually you might get like brown or orange or something like that. <clears throat> so that's that side. And then we can do this side here. So on this one here, I'll try to zoom in. At least on this board, it actually shows the pinouts. So I can get that out without ripping them more. So because we did the color codes up here, we already know what the colors are going to be here. So GPS uh, and got to learn how to make uh, more room here. So the first color is white. And this is just for yourself. You can take pictures too and obviously do it way better than I am. As long as you understand it, it should be all good. Red, next one's yellow. Brown. And then black. So now it's just comparing the colors here. So white is SEL. Blue is SDA. Red is 5 volts. Yellow is TX. Brown is RX. And then black is your ground. All right? So your kit should have came with a cable like this. And then we'll just also do the color codes and the pinouts for this cable just to make sure it's compatible. If not, you're going to have to cut these wires or um, use a pick or a pin and just uh, move these wires around so it corresponds with your GPS. On Actually on this end, you would have to do it. Okay. So again, we're going to do with the pins facing up on the clip side. So, uh, pick racer. And it's six pins. See if I can get all of them in there this time better. So now the colors red, yellow, green, orange, blue, and black. On the other end, is orange, blue, red, yellow, green, and black. Okay, back to this side again. So the pinouts would be Red is 5 volts, yellow is TX, green is RX, orange is SCL, blue is SDA, and black is ground. So now we can just look over here. So orange is SCL, blue is SDA, 
Red is 5 volts. Yellow is TX. Green is RX. And black is ground. Now we did all this just basically to confirm that this one here is the same as this. So, I mean, this end here has to be identical to this end here from your GPS. And now we can just look here. So, this is a GPS end and it's a pixel racer end. So, ground, ground, RX, TX, 5 volts, SDA, and SEL. So, it's 100% compatible. So, now we can just take this cable here and directly plug it into this GPS here. Okay, so I'm gonna save plugging this guy in for last because I have to glue things down. But besides that, it's just, you plug it in and you're done. All right, so I'm basically done with the upgrade to the Pix uh, Racer. Um, I can't use this guy here because the USB, after this is on, it's just way too high up. And when you put the shell on, it pushes on the USB. So you might have to get creative with a USB, maybe one with an L or something like that. I can go sideways and just a smaller profile. But besides that, I'm basically done. It's just to install this guy. And he would go on to the puck with the arrow facing that way, like that. So you have to uh, take off the bottom, obviously. You have to anyways to get the cable in. And then you'd have to set rotation roll to um, 180. So the way this guy gets plugged in, this is the kind of the pain in the butt one actually, where it says RC in, this guy actually plugs underneath it. There's a port there that says GPS. It's really hard to get to. And it's gonna be hard to unclip when you have to take the shell off because you have to get your finger up inside there to push that clip. So you might wanna find a pick or something like that. Maybe, I think this might work. No, nope, not gonna work either. Yeah, so something like this might work to lift it back up carefully, but you're also gonna have to hold the uh, shell at the same time. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'll just leave that there. So the speaker, you might wanna tape this guy up. Just first throw some tape around it so it doesn't short out on anything. I think I used way too much tape here. That's okay. And just tuck it away somewhere. You're gonna to wanna to use zip ties and everything after you're all done to make sure everything looks pretty. And then your two gimbal wires. So the white one goes into, uh, with white at the top, into number two. Get it in there. Okay, and then the white and the red one would go into three. I'm not sure how much voltage this thing can supply for the five volt line underneath the quad. So uh, just be a little bit careful with that maybe. And then your last guy here is a switch and this is also the light. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna route it here and then just glue the switch over the hole like that or something like that. And uh, the receiver I'm just going to leave loose because it doesn't really matter if it uh, moves around. Plus I'm going to want to move it so I can get to the GPS location. So that's about it guys. I'll just show you some mission planner settings. It's still pretty horrible like always so I really doubt I'm going to get outside. We're in the melting season now so now it's really wet outside. But anyways, um, yeah, so I'll just slap the shell on. Well, I'll see if I can do this. This might be a real pain in the butt. I'm out of camera here. Oh, can't see. Okay. 
So you might want to extend this wire and then uh, you'd have tons of play. Okay, so it'd go on like this, and then I'm gonna glue this, hot glue this guy back on, like that. And then in Mission Planner, we have to set the roll, rotation roll to 180. Right, so I'll get into Mission Planner settings. All right, we're at the stage now where your quadcopter should be all screwed back together or taped up or whatever. And you can plug in the quadcopter. Not really gonna get into too much details about this. I'm gonna include my I'll just wait till it stops beeping. <laughs> I'll include my parameters in the uh, description so you can just load mine. It'll be a little bit quicker. Right, so if your GPS says no GPS, it could be that uh, you have a bad connection or sometimes the Pix Racer just takes a, a little bit of time. So just leave it alone for a bit and see if it finally goes to no fix. Eventually, if you're in a house or whatever, it might get some sats. Right, so just make sure it's detected. And 115200 and connect. Not sure if this one talks. Okay, I don't think it is. Okay, so go to um, initial setup. You can do the wizard if you want, but it's kind of a waste of time actually. So it's really up to you. So you can go to um, mandatory hardware, do your Excel calibration with this guy here and follow the steps. Next, the compass. The first time you do it, you might have to have a check mark in both of these, or you can just click on this Pixhawks one here. It's gonna automatically set these guys and then just uncheck them. And the only one you're gonna wanna use is this one. You can try using the internal compass and this compass, but I found with my other uh, micro picks, uh, it got really twitchy outside. It actually started getting a mine of its own. So <clears throat> you could try it both ways if you want. So here, just click here, the rotation roll should be set to 180. And then, then do a live calibration. After that, go to a radio calibration, click calibrate and move to turn on your remote and do all the, uh, that, this part or whatever. Uh, the next is, uh, you don't really have to do that one. You might have to uh, do it the other way as you used to with the CX-20. You could try doing an ESC calibration through here if you want, it's up to you. Flight modes, this is the flight modes. So just set yours up the same way. Fail safes, for now I would suggest just to uh, put the radio, if there's no radio, just put it to land or even disabled, if you're doing it in the house. For the first couple of tests, you just wanna make sure everything's working before you do a return to home or something in your house by accident. Okay, um, config and tuning. Standard params we'll go to. Actually, we're just gonna go right to, yeah, we can do standard params first. So you can scroll all the way down to every video I make. I always say this and I always lose it. Okay, RTL altitude. It's by default, it's set to 1500. So that's 50 feet. So instead I set mine to 424, which is roughly 13 feet. Just like I suggest in all my videos, when you're doing a maiden flight, you don't really want it to go 50 feet up in the air just in case something's wrong with your compass and uh, you'll panic and you probably won't get control of, uh, control of it and most likely crash it. So I always set mine to about 13 feet. At least it's in a more reasonable height, but that's optional. Next is uh, advanced params, I think. We'll go here. Standard params. Um, you can also recheck this if you want to, um, except it won't arm if you don't have a GPS. It's kind of handy to have this just in case something actually is wrong with your compass. So you might want to just put check marks and everything except the GPS. This is totally up to you. 
I just leave mine off, which I probably shouldn't. Okay, full parameter list. Going to angles. Okay, so by default, by default it's set to 4500. Uh, the CX-20 comes at 2200, so I just set mine back to 2200 because I'm used to it. If you set it to 45, that means it actually can do a 45 degree angle, which uh, it's easy to crash it. Um, down here, this Acel P Max, I set mine to 72,000 uh, for that one, 72,000 for this one. And then this guy here I set to 18,000. By default, this one should be 110,000. That one's 110,000. And that one was uh, 27,000. So this is up to you. If you don't like the feel of it, I just like a more sluggish uh, quad. But if it's really windy, like extremely windy, you might want to boost these up so you can actually fight the wind. So this is up to you again. Um... The button, I think we already went over. If I can see it. Yeah, the button here, you can enable or disable it. So what this does is when you plug in your quadcopter, your CX-20 motors are gonna constantly beep until you hold down that button. And then it'll shut the, it'll turn the motors on or whatever, send a signal to the motors. And uh, then you can arm it after. But at least it stops the beeping sound. But I just set mine to zero, and then there's no beeping at all. Okay, so the most important one is if you're running version 3.55. This is really important because your motors are always going to beep. Go down to um, frame something. <laughs> so just Fs. All right, frame class. This has to be set to 1. And then the frame type, make sure that's set to one as well. Frame class just sets one is for quadcopter. And by default, uh, it's something else and your motors just won't ever shut up. So one and one and write it. That's if you're at version 3.55. Version 3.46, you don't have to do this, I don't think. And I believe that's all I want to show you guys. There's... Um, Mott, they got rid of the spinning for the motors, which is kind of annoying. Like mine right now don't spin because I set mine to uh, Mott spin arm zero. So that's actually low, 0.9, low. And then uh, Mott spin minimum is zero, is also low. And that basically doesn't let the motor spin up when you arm it. For some reason, I just can't get used to when I arm a quad having a motor spin, I just don't like that. Uh, but a lot of people do, and apparently the makers of this really tried hard to force us to make us use it, which is really odd. But that's that. All right, guys, this video went too long. If I add on the four, four next steps, it's going to be way over an hour. So my part two of the video is going to cover the Wi-Fi module, the power module, the CX-20 GPS and compass, and uh, the ESC calibration. All right, guys, like and subscribe, and that's it.